Our next guest joins us for reaction and analysis, and she has powerful insight into the Born Alive bill because as a nurse, she claims to have witnessed babies being aborted alive without medical care. Jill Stanick is now the national campaign chair for the Susan B. Anthony list. Jill, thanks for being with us on this very busy pro-life week. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Can you briefly share with us what you witnessed as sure. a nurse? Sure. I was a nurse in 1999 at Christ Hospital in Oakland, Illinois, mm -hmm. when I discovered the hospital was not only involved in late-term abortions, but sometimes babies survived. Hmm. And if they survived, they were shelved to die in the soiled utility room. So one night a nursing coworker was taking a little abortion survivor aborted at 21 weeks with Down syndrome, that's why he'd been aborted, to the soiled utility room to die, and I couldn't let him die alone, so I rocked him for the 45 minutes that he lived. That's, and that changed the course of your life. It Just did, in the it. course of 45 minutes, it made me a no pro-life activist for sure. And it was back in 2002, so right. 16 years ago, that President George W. Bush invited you to be with him when he signed the Born Alive Infants Protection Act so how is the House bill different than that? What, what's the update? Well, the Born Alive Infant Protection Act was just a definitions bill to find what it means to be a legal person when born, and it says that you should be protected, but it didn't do anything more than that. Okay. So the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Act adds teeth to the Born Alive Act, okay. and it says that abortionists and staff can be prosecuted, uh, they might even be imprisoned and fined, and that moms can have civil uh, opportunities to file civil lawsuits. How many babies are born alive after an abortion attempt? What do we know about this? Well, of course, the most obvious case is Gerb Kermit Gosnell in 2013 was convicted of murdering three babies after they were aborted alive, but his staff said there were many more. But there are other instances, for instance, 2005, a woman at an Orlando abortion clinic aborted her baby alive in a toilet and even called 911 and the clinic staff turned away the 911 personnel at the door. Uh, baby lived for 11 minutes. Another case where an aborted baby in Hialeah, Florida uh, was zipped alive into a biohazard bag by the um, owner of the clinic. Uh, in Canada, we know of 500 documented cases between five, 2000 and 2009. So it, it is going on around us. There is definitely a need for this law. This week, we are encouraging senators to take up the Pain-Capable Unborn Child Protection Act, which would ban abortions at 20 weeks. This, as the House will vote on the Born Alive bill, what's the strategy in pairing these two pro-life bills together? Well, these are definitely companion bills. You know, the one bill um, bans abortions at 20 weeks. The other bill says that babies who survive abortions should be saved. And we're saying that uh, we should combine these two and say that infants aborted alive should be protected, Absolutely. but then they also shouldn't be aborted in the first place. Right. So most babies who are aborted alive are about five months old or older, and, and this born, the Pain Capable Act would protect them. And this is all, of course, happening the week of the March for Life. Right. Why is that so significant? Well, the March for Life, of course, signifies the, the dastardly Roe v. Wade decision in 1973. And so ever since then, we've been trying to take back turf. And this is an instance when most Americans agree with us mm -hmm. that late-term abortions are wrong. Mm -hmm. And polls show more women think that it's wrong than even men. So um, this is definitely... Uh, an issue late-term abortion survivors and pain capable of being able to speak to the whole country and um, get the country on our side on this. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing your witness. I know that was a horrific experience, um, but your pro-life work has borne a lot of fruit. So thank you for thank that. Thank you. Jill Stanick with the Susan B. Anthony List.